Hello, welcome to Woodline Tracking. Today, I'm gonna go over part two of my kel Sub 2000 here. It's a Gen 2, a lot better than Gen 1. It takes Glock magazines and it's a 40 cal. So, I'm gonna go over what I had to do to make this gun successful to carry it out in the bush, not just have it as a range gun. And uh, I know many people down on Caltech and say, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, um, I've changed many people's minds that at first thought about this gun and then when they saw it operate and what it could do and it didn't malfunction, uh, many times people told me, oh, that's a great little gun and Fernando even bought one. So, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about this gun, what I use it for, and the modifications I had to make to it to get it up to a standard to take it off the range and into the bush and actually use it for something. Um, I will basically use this gun for if I'm the main tracker on the team and I have a full team around me, this be a gun I would consider taking with me. Depends on what I'm, what I'm tracking, what I'm doing, where I'm at. But this would be a consideration because it's so light. I can spin. It's easier to track. And when I'm a tracker, my job isn't to fight off the bad guys. It's to find the tracks and keep the team moving on track. All on track. So the flankers can do their job. Um, so that's basically what I use it for. And also it's can be in and it's much better than having a pistol because it does give you a little more range. And it is a call being a rifle. So and if you carry a Glock pistol you can interchange the pistol mags with your rifle mags and have two for one. So but I had to do some things to make it successful. Just from Keltec it wasn't really successful. For sure, I put this sling, Blackhawk Tactical Sling on it. As you can see here, I tied a piece of 550 cord around it, went through the hole here, and that allows it to slide. And I put a sling mount up here, and it did a good job so that I can go left to right handed with this gun and use it effectively. Um, I've tried down here, 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 it didn't work out real well, so you want a good sling. Also, this, I believe it's called a cash or nut or nut here, it's just locked tight on. They don't thread this. It's just there to keep the plastic from spreading apart. Well, it always comes loose, so I just took and wrapped electrical tape around it so it stays in position. So, Kotec should address that issue. I also took and put an EOTech on it. Yes, an EOTech is more money than a gun, but I'm a firm believer in good optics. Uh, I'm going to do a video on optics for combat modifier because it is a good combat modifier to so have good optics on your gun. Uh, so that's what I put on it. I also, this gun allows you to run suppress. I have run and suppress and it does a good job. It doesn't get too gassy and it shoots fine suppressed. I haven't had a problem out of it. I put an IR laser, an infrared laser on it for my MVGs. So. I can use it at night with my night vision. Uh, as for stuff to improve in the gun, I would recommend going to M Carbo. It's a great company, great guys, knowledgeable, makes good parts for this gun, have great customer service, gets the parts out to you and go the extra mile. I would highly recommend M Carbo for anything that you want to buy and I would buy from them and anything if I have a choice because they're a great company. They know their product and they do a good job. Um, but you want to first of all change out the, the trigger ball and the trigger springs and get yourself a lighter trigger port if it's big help. You want to put an aluminum trigger on it. You want to change this trigger guard out that actually breaks the gun down from the plastic to the aluminum one. That's a big help. You also want to get the buffer for this because the buffer does do what it says and it does take a lot of recoil, 20 some percent like they say, out of it. 
So you do all the modifications to it and it brings the gun up to a good standard. One more thing you want to do is you want to put the stainless steel feed ramp in it. Uh, that is a must because the plastic feed ramp, I've seen them where they get chipped and cracked and uh, the stainless steel it just takes all that away. You can buff it if you want, but uh, those are the modifications I would recommend doing if you want to consider using this gun more than just a range gun. Okay, let's talk about magazines for these guns. The Glock 15 shot factory works great in this gun, not a problem. The Glock 22 shot works wonderful. I haven't had a bit of problem out of them. They walk in the gun, fit good, they don't stick out too far and give you 22 shots. This is the most recommended one I would say is buy these Glock 22 ones. These Korean pieces of crap, 30 shot pieces of crap, don't waste the money. They're junk. I would not buy them. They, uh, I've never had, I had to sand this one down to even get it to go in the gun. And I, oh, it has problems. These EST clear mags, uh, they're not bad. Uh, the little, the 40 shots not bad, it's a little long in the gun. These 24s aren't bad, but they're so, they're not equal to this Glock. I mean, I would shoot them on the range, not a problem, but these Glock 22s, I'm taking Glock mags out there from ground up here. The mag pool ones, I have shot some of them. I'm not really impressed with them. They're okay for the range, but I would not take them out in the bush. Okay, let's talk about the accuracy of this gun. This gun base fits a 16 inch barrel on it. Uh, I've took it all the way out to 200 yards and shot accurately with it. And I mean accurately is hitting a silhouette man sized target. You guys saw in part one me shooting at 150 yards. But I have gone to 200 yards and got as best as 4 out of 5 hits on it. Um, at best. A lot of times I might only get 2 or 3. but. It depends on the wind, and you gotta aim high and adjust for any wind. Uh, I would say within 70 yards, this gun is good. It'll hit what you're shooting at. Um, uh, you start getting past that, you have to do Kentucky ranges, Kentucky windings, or make adjustments. But it will do it if you do it. It gets down to a lot of knowing the gun and. Judging the wind is the biggest problem with this little gun. Um, it does shoot through the bush well, as you saw in the Porsche video, and I have shot this thing through the bush a bunch. It does stay on target. It, these little pistol carbines do a good job of shooting through the bush and staying on target. They just don't go through a lot of barricades, a lot of uh, trees or anything. So, so there you have it. In my opinion, it's a great little tracker gun. If you're tracking and you have a team that is loaded for bear around you, it's a great little gun. But you have to do modifications to it. Go to M Carbo and get the upgrades I talked about. You gotta put a good optic on it. These sights aren't really the best. You can use them, but you wanna put a good optic on it. Um, a good sling. And uh, have good magazines and you will have a successful gun to take out there and use. If you don't do that, I can't, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, it makes a nice little tracking gun. So remember, time may go on, but your life may not.